Yes, uh, thank you so much and um, uh, greetings from uh, Sweden to everyone. I'm so happy to be here to discuss this very important issues with you with the consultation for the Dubai OER declaration and uh, thanks to CAM for this initiative. It's fantastic. Um, yes, I was just about to say that uh, what you just said that I'm here, the OER advocacy committee for uh, ICDE. And we have done so since 2018 because this is a really um, crucial and important issue for ICDE. ICDE is the International Council for Open and Distance Education. And um, actually, uh, ICDE has been in, in, um, involved and they uh, are supported very much by UNESCO. So we are closely following the UNESCO work. And also, um, they are following, of course, what we are doing. From the OER Advocacy Committee, we have just uh, gone through um, uh, the survey from this consultation. And uh, we have ambassadors from the, all the six regions uh, around the world. And we have um, supported, uh, we will and have supported ICD with some of our um, reflections, questions, and uh, what we see as challenges. Uh, so I'm very happy to discuss uh, this with you. Um, First, I will also say that I have been involved in this field since actually the the OER uh, concept was coined back in 2002, so almost some 20 years by now. And um, I have been working a lot on different kind of uh, initiatives, mainly on policy and strategy um, uh, approaches. Um, we have to, we, from the OER Advocacy Committee, we also took the initiative to um, be part of the uh, survey at that time for the OER um, uh, recommendation. Uh, and actually UNESCO already uh, back in 2019 uh, took the initiative to consult with the community, as Paula was mentioned. This is a great opportunity for us from the community to be involved and to be included and say our voice, because it is important who, to recall whose voices are heard. And uh, in this case, all the voices need to be heard. Uh, first of all, um, we have to recall that OER is not just about OER as such. It is about the common goods. It is about democracy. It is about ethics. It is about human rights. It is about quality education for all, not leaving anyone behind. It is about accessibility, scalability, diversity, and also that tax money should go back to the taxpayers. And it is also about, as UNESCO is saying themselves, to reach the Agenda 2030 and the SDG 4. And we all know that SDG 4 have an impact, influence, and are related to all of the other SDGs. So that is why it is so important. We also have to recall uh, that it has been a long journey, some 20 years. <clears throat> the concept was coined in 2002. Uh, Antonio already mentioned the Paris uh, Declaration in 2012. Then we have the, uh, but before that, we had the Cape Town Declaration in 2008. And then in uh, the Ljubljana Declaration in 2017 and the ministerial statement, everyone was committed to do something about this. And then we have the, UNES the Cape Town CPT plus 10 in 2018, that OER need to be connected with all other open movements, not to be seen isolated. Then finally, um, built on all those uh, previous work, the uh, uh, UNESCO OER recommendation was launched and adopted by all member states in 2019. And that was including with evaluation and monitoring. And it was also said already back in 2019, four years from now, <clears throat> that uh, everything what we are doing in this field should be related to the OL recommendation. By the following up monitoring last year, that wasn't happened. Of course, it takes time. <laughs> Um, uh, and the recommendation was really about uh, moving from awareness raising to implementation, to action, to walk the talk. And we have long, far long way to go with that. So I have, of course, very, very large hope for this uh, consultation for the Dubai OER declaration that we can move forward 
that we can make actions, not just talk the talk and not just about capacity building. And then I come to my other statements that um, it is important those five areas, which include monitoring and evaluation, uh, are really interconnected, interrelated. We have a tendency to go to one by one and to look at them as silos. Even in the, OR, in the recommendation for 2019, uh, it is clearly stated that they are interrelated. And actually, uh, there are just, uh, not just, but there are four areas because the international uh, area, which is was pointed out as a separate one, as it is so important, is included in all the four areas. Uh, we also have to recall that um, we have to look at this as an ecosystem as they are interconnection. They have an impact influences on each other. For example, what we're doing with policy, is it uh, just local policy? It is connected with a global policy, globalization we used to call that. Um, how does that have an impact, for example, for capacity building, for policy, uh, et cetera? So we need to see it as an ecosystem. And also already in the uh, recommendation from 2019, the stakeholders were expanded a lot. And that means that the stakeholders are more or less everyone. We have a tendency to look at teachers and educators. <clears throat> and sometimes also learners, of course. <laughs> but it is so much more. It also includes the community, uh, the, citizens, the civil citizens organizations, um, uh, researchers, of course, um, a publisher, uh, the private sectors, intergovernmental organizations, um, media, uh, parents, uh, etc. Just to mention some. So we need to look at that as well. Uh, I used to, to say and I used to argue that the uh, bigger challenge we have with OER and this field with the ecosystem is to take OER outside the university, outside the institutions, to the public, to the people out there who need quality education. And I see this uh, open consultation for this Dubai OER declaration very much that this is some steps forward, how we can do that to reach the citizens. With not at least uh, this uh, new, uh, well, not new, I will say, but uh, with AI and especially generative AI. I will uh, cite uh, a colleague of us, um, David Willey, who recently wrote a blog post about this. And the, the title was, Why Open Education Will Become Generative AI Education. And he had, has a, four, uh, a five state statement. First of all, the primary goal of the open education movement is to increase access to education opportunities. Second, the primary strategy for accomplish this goal is to increase access to educational resources. And third, generative AI can provide this access dramatically. Uh, <clears throat> and maybe much more than the current OER has been done. And we know that the current OER is mainly about creation, not so, so much about the other Ours. And also the fourth one, the optimal uh, tactic for accomplishing the open education movement, primarily goals, uh, uh, goal is no longer creating and sharing traditional OER. The optimal tactic, which is the fifth one, for accomplishing the open education movement, primary goal is to use generative AI. So I think we have to look at OER in a much more broad perspective. And I see uh, what I have um, read and reflected and discussed so far with this consultation, uh, this um, uh, new uh, recommendation, declaration, will uh, support that. But it is important for all of us uh, to take the steps for actions and for implementation at a broad, um, at a broad range. Um, 
So again, I will say the, say the, the largest challenge I see is to take all your outside education institutions and to serve the people in the society. For me, this is really, really a challenge and really, really important. I will be more than happy to discuss uh, all those kind of issues with you during today and also later on. Thank you so much.